Pete here with the Small Business Resource Center. I just wanted to go over some important information. Um, this is actually going to be the opening statements for the Congress testimony with Steven Mnuchin. What we have is Majority Whip James Clyburn. He basically has an opening statement and of course in that opening statement he seems to want to blame uh, the Trump campaign as well as Republicans for problems with the coronavirus, how they reacted and um, what's currently going on. And then of course I'm going to play the full video for uh, Jim Jordan who's of course the Republican representative for Congress and he basically is going to put his information about what he feels the problems are. And I can say I agree and disagree with some of the things that they say, but the reason why I have both of these opening statements is because a lot of times people look at some of the videos I post and they say you are anti this or whatever, or you're attacking, typically they say Democrats. But you gotta keep in mind, everything that I put, you can fact check. You can simply probably type a search up or some of the times when I quote people, I actually put the quotes in my videos in the text below. So you can actually check this stuff yourself. Um, by no means am I attacking one or the other party. I actually did vote for Obama the first time. I have told people that. Did I vote for him the second time? No, I did not. Um, so just putting it out there. There's no sense for me to lie or deceive people. And basically everything I put on my channel I do is the truth. And if I make a mistake, if you can prove I made a mistake and I quoted something wrong or said something wrong, uh, let me know because definitely I would correct it. Um, I'm not gonna delete the video, but I'll probably type a correction below. And then when I make another video, I'll make sure I won't put the same thing there because deleting a video causes problems with your channel. Um, if you don't understand how YouTube algorithm works, it kinda messes things up when you start deleting your videos. But anyways, this is Pete with Small Business Resource Center. I recommend watching both of these. And I'm going to have my notes on the full two and a half hour brief. But keep in mind, I'm trying to shorten this to around 30 minutes. So this opening part might be a little long, but then the rest I'm going to try to condense into around 30 minutes because I know most people don't have two and a half hours. And like myself, um, you know, I don't have two and a half hours. Plus, I got to do a lot of editing. But I don't want you guys to have to go through the whole thing. Um, all right. Well, it's Pete. Enjoy. Check it out. Today, the Select Subcommittee welcomes Secretary of the Treasury Stephen Mnuchin. This is the first time Secretary Mnuchin has testified before the subcommittee, and I thank him for his appearance here today. On July 29th, the Federal Reserve wrote, and I quote, the path of the economy will depend significantly on the course of the virus. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, who was appointed by President Trump, emphasized this point saying, it's so fun fundamental, I think we can't say it enough. Tragically, seven months since the first case was discovered on our shows, the course of this coronavirus continues to be devastating. Nearly six million Americans have tested positive for more than 182,000 Americans have died, far more than any other nation on earth. This summer, while most of other countries were successfully containing the virus, the United States saw a surge in cases and deaths. And we know why. Instead of leading with a national strategy, the White House pushed states to reopen without a plan to keep people safe. Instead of communicating science-based public health guidance, the president claimed the virus would and I quote here, sort of just disappear, I hope. These failures are costing hundreds of Americans lives every day. Just as the Federal Reserve described, the failure to address America's health crisis has also caused an unprecedented economic crisis that has left many Americans out of work 
and struggling to feed their families and pay housing costs. The most recent data show the unemployment rate was 10.2% at the end of July, higher than the worst month of the Great Recession and its aftermath. As of August 1st, 29 million Americans were receiving or waiting for unemployment benefits. Unemployment claims are more than 10 times higher than they were at the beginning of the year and show a little sign of returning to normal levels anytime soon. Of course, some jobs lost at the beginning of the pandemic have returned as certain businesses have reopened. That is a good thing. The administration has claimed this partial rebound means we are guaranteed a V-shaped economic recovery where the economy returns to full strength quickly. But the evidence does not bear that out. We continue to see roughly one million Americans file new unemployment claims every week. A clear sign uh, that the economy remains in serious trouble. And rather than a V-shaped recovery, economists have warned we face an uneven K-shaped recovery, where the wealthy quickly bounce back to pre-pandemic prosperity, while lower-income families continue to suffer economic harm. In July, former Fed chairs Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen testified before the subcommittee. Quoting from their joint written statement, lower paid workers, as well as women and minorities, are overrepresented in the most affected sectors and thus have borne a disproportionate share of the job and income losses. End of quote. Today's hearing is a call to action. The most important step we can take to fix the economy in the long term is to get the pandemic under control. But American families are hurting now, and there are urgent steps the administration must take to prevent our nation's economic crisis from becoming a catastrophe. First, additional fiscal stimulus is urgently needed. Many of the safety nets Congress established in the CARES Act have expired, and millions of Americans are now facing eviction, debt, and hunger. As the pandemic drags on, states, cities, and businesses are warning that more layoffs may be coming. On May 15th, more than three months ago, House Democrats passed a comprehensive bill to address these problems. The HEROES Act would extend $600 weekly unemployment benefits, help families with food and housing assistance, and support state and local governments and the millions of essential workers they employ. Republicans rejected the bill when the House offered to uh, meet them in the middle with a compromise proposal. Republicans rejected that too. Instead, the president offered a fake solution, executive orders that give the appearance of action, but were clearly insufficient to address the economic peril Americans face. Secretary Mnuchin, I hope you will return to the negotiating table prepared to find common cause on legislation that meets the pressing needs of Americans' families and communities that are hurting from this crisis. Second, the Treasury Department must improve its implementation of relief programs passed by Congress. So far, the administration has prioritized big businesses 
over small businesses and the American workers that Congress intended to protect. The administration needs to refocus the Paycheck Protection Program, payroll support for the airline industry, and other relief programs to ensure that they are preserving jobs, not lining the pockets of wealthy executives. Third, Treasury must improve oversight and accountability to ensure that taxpayers' dollars are not squandered. Today, the Select Committee is releasing a staff report raising serious concerns about potential waste, fraud, and abuse in the Paycheck Protection Program. Based on an analysis of the Treasurer data, the subcommittee identified more than 10,000 loans to companies that receive multiple PPP loans, a violation of the program's terms. Thousands of other loans were awarded to companies that were ineligible for the program or had red flags indicating potential fraud. Secretary Mnuchin, I think you had previously testified that given the need to get relief money out quickly, it was inevitable that Treasury, and I quote, ran into a lot of issues, end of quote. That is a false dichotomy. Taxpayers should not have to choose between quickly getting aid to those who need it and wasting federal funds. And there are simple steps that could have been taken to improve oversight and reduce fraud. Our report makes recommendations for steps that Treasury can still take to safeguard taxpayer money, including improving the agency's weak audit plan for PPP. As I have said before, the purpose of our oversight is not to cast blame for past failures, but to make improvements to ensure future success. I hope this hearing will be an opportunity for Democrats and Republicans to come together to acknowledge the serious problems Americans face and identify real solutions. Thank you. And in the ranking member's absence, I now yield to Mr. Jordan or a Republican member he may designate for an opening statement. Thank you for, uh, thank you for joining us. It's unfortunate that the chairman criticizes your work uh, in this unprecedented time we find ourselves. Three trillion dollar package that Congress put together with your leadership, President Trump's leadership, 500 billion total dollars in the PPP program, five million loans you made that helped 85 percent of the small businesses around this country. 51 million jobs, and you come here and you get criticized by the chairman. I want to thank you for the great work that you have done. It's unfortunate that the chairman didn't take into account the fact that the ranking member was not going to be available for today's hearing. But we appreciate the fact, Mr. Secretary, that you're here and you're willing to provide testimony again about the Treasury's extraordinary response to the virus and what this virus did to our economy. The Trump administration's work combating this virus and this crisis is unprecedented from the beginning. Speaker Pelosi and the Democrats stood in the way of the president. The congressional Democrats were focused on their impeachment sham. The president was starting a task force to combat the virus. When the speaker said San Francisco is fine, the president was blocking travel from China. When Mayor de Blasio and New Yorkers said, quote, go about your lives, the president was starting research on a vaccine. And while Vice President Biden has been locked in his basement, the president built the world's leading testing system from scratch. We've heard just the other week from Dr. Fauci himself about the, how the president's actions saved lives. We've heard a lot about science and following the recommendations of the CDC and the guidelines that they put forward. It would have been nice if the state of New York had done the same, where for 46 days, Governor Cuomo sent COVID positive patients back into nursing homes and resulting in all kinds of tragedy for the individuals and families of those folks who who lived in those, uh, those facilities. When the economy shut down, 
It was tough. It was difficult. People could not break their business. People couldn't go to church. People couldn't go to schools. The president knew help was required. And in just 10 days, again, working with you, Mr. Secretary, Congress passed the largest spending relief bill in the history of the country. In that legislation was the Paycheck Protection Program, which extended, as I said, 5 million loans through 6,000 vendors totaling over $5 billion, direct help to small business owners and families and individuals across this great country. And due to your hard work in the administration, the PPP was stood up in just hours and ran out of money in less than two weeks. The president and congressional Republicans went to speak to Pelosi to ask for money, but she wanted to bail out Democrat-run cities instead of helping small businesses. Leader McConnell had a bill, didn't get a vote, not until June when an oversight colleague, Mr. Roy, introduced a bill that would replenish the fund and make it even more helpful to businesses on the ground. The PPP stood empty because of the Beltway games from the Democrats. But the PPP program, which supported 51 million jobs and 85 percent of the small business in America, how many more faltered while the Democrats held the additional support hostage? Fifteen days after the CARES Act, Treasury began distributing checks, direct checks to individuals and families. A few months later, you had successfully distributed 120 million checks by direct deposit, 35 million paper checks and four million prepaid debit cards for a total of almost $270 billion. Again, unprecedented. Next, you successfully implemented the payroll support program, $32 billion in loans direct to the airline industry in support of hundreds of thousands of jobs. Amazingly, the application for this program was ready in a matter of hours. Again, unprecedented. Finally, you directed $150 billion straight to the states and localities. By July, Treasury had obligated all of this money, but much of it much of it still remains unspent by the states. New York State has only spent 53 percent, but Governor Cuomo asked for more. Michigan has only spent 8 percent, but Governor Whitmer asked for more. Speaker continues to say states don't have the money, but they do. Every single state has money available to them because of the Trump administration. Now, it's not to say everything was perfect, but we need to remember it's the federal government. And the quick response that we were trying to get and actually did achieve there's going to be a few mistakes when you do that. When you approve $3 trillion and expect the federal government to get it out the door into people in a matter of days, of course, there may be a few mistakes. What should be commended, though, as I've said already, is the hard work done to correct those mistakes. These programs save and continue to save jobs. Eventually, though, the best way to stimulate an economy, the absolute best way to stimulate and grow our economy is to let people go back to work. And when it was time, the president led the charge to reopen the country, get Americans back to work, and get our kids back to school. We are seeing a steady decrease in unemployment, a steady increase in jobs. The president built the greatest economy in the world once before, and I know we can do it again. Mr. Secretary, again, thank you, and I look forward to asking questions. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back. So I do ask this, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask unanimous consent that we enter the Republican report on the Paycheck Protection Program, which, as I said, supported 51 million jobs and 85% of the small businesses out there uh, across the country. So I'd ask unanimous consent that that be made part of the record. So here you go. You got opening statements from James Clyburn and Jim Jordan. And basically, you can make your decision on what you feel. But like I mentioned, I like to put everything out there so everyone knows what's going on. Well, this is Pete with the Small Business Resource Center. Smash a like button. Consider subscribing. And have a great day.